Hi guys, so welcome back to another episode of Singaporean Talks Money. So this week, I actually um, released an article based on another article from Bloomberg titled The FOMO Economy. Is everyone making money except you? So what the article talked about was about this BAS ETF and FOMO ETF, which were both created due to this new trend of uh, meme stocks or social sentiments where communities rally together to bring a stock up and down. So let's explore a little more into each. So first let's talk a bit more about the BAS ETF uh, which is also called the VANEC Vectors Social Sentiment ETF. So uh, for this ETF it was actually created on March 2nd 2021 which is rather recent, and the issuer is Vanek, uh, hence the full name is uh, Vanek Vector Social Sentiment ETF. It is listed as BAS, and it has about 75 companies in it, uh, which we will look through in a while. So of course, in their white paper, they did talk about uh, very interesting uh, things, and the, what they mainly do is that they seek to track as closely as possible before fees and expenses, the price and yield performance of the BAS next-gen AIUS sentiment leaders index, which is intended to track the performance of the 75 large cap US stocks which exhibit the highest degree of positive investor sentiment and bullish perception based on content aggregated from online sources, including social media, news articles, blog posts, and other alternative databases. So, let's uh, take a look at its uh, top 10, right? Uh, top 10 holdings. So, for the BAS ETF, the top 10 holdings are as such, where you can see there is a uh, GameStop. Palantir being the second and third uh, largest holding, followed by DraftKings, which Cathie Woods has taken a liking to recently. And there's Twitter and AMD, which uh, I'm more familiar with. And so in terms of the top 10 holdings, they take up about... Oh, the top 10 holdings, they take up, including Amazon, they take up about 31% of the whole... Uh, ETF, which I think is rather uh, substantial. And of course, below the top 10, you can see other familiar names like Tesla, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, Pinterest, and I think Square, Netflix, there's a lot of uh, familiar names that you can see in its holdings, you know. And actually, looking at the white paper, which is a report where they inform uh, readers concisely about why they are doing uh, this ETF or how it ca came about. It's actually quite engaging and you can see that the way that they have written it is to really try to relate to the masses by bringing a lot of data to talk about social media and definitely it starts out with a great title, Join the Swamp, Invest in the Power of Collective Conviction. So first, definitely it opens up by saying, talking about sentiments and how it drives the market, just like the previous bubbles that we have experienced. And of course, um, uh, they talk about how the beginning of stock sentiments came about and using a lot of uh, social media uh, data to show how it can really bring about uh, stock price change. And definitely COVID-19 being a huge impact in getting people to uh, get on to technology because definitely we have to work remotely and it just uh, becomes, technology becomes a huge platform to help us to collaborate and also to have some social interactions. So of course the huge thing is that they show the pre-COVID average uh, social media platform message volume against the post-COVID average uh, social media platform message volume. And you can see there's a substantial increase in it. 
So, um, I think it's quite interesting. Uh, ETF and the holdings are pretty familiar to what you would see in a huge uh, growth kind of mindset right now. So as you can see at the end of the page, you can see that the top contributors to the 2020 performance for their index, which they are trying to track, number one is Tesla, Roku, AMD, Nevada, Square. I think there's a lot of huge familiar names that are growth companies as well, DocuSign, Enphase, CrowdStrike, you know, they, they are all pretty uh, fast growing. Zoom that has uh, really accelerated their growth during COVID-19. It's quite interesting. And I think um, currently it's trading at a price of about $25, US dollar, I would think. Mm. Yeah. So let's move on to the FOMO ETF. So FOMO ETF is even younger than the BAS ETF and was created in 21st, 25th May 2021. And it is a fund managed by the Tuti Capital um, Management and is listed on BETS Global Markets. So the fund name, as you expected, is called the Fear of Missing Out ETF. Expense ratio is pretty high. Um, at 0.90% and the principal investment strategy unlike social sentiments which is based on social media platform FOMO ETF uses inform agility and uh, where they will navigate through the turbulent times we currently face and another strategy is that they cut through the noise so um, that means that they focus on what they deem as the important news and use that to make informed decisions. So FOMO ETF definitely makes you think that the top 10 ETF will be stocks that have exper experienced maybe parabolic growth. Uh, however, the holdings do show otherwise. As we see a lot of like larger companies like Walmart, you know, uh, Citibank, CVS Health being inside Home Depot and I think it's really something a bit different than what you're expecting because there is JP Morgan, Bank of America, Nike, General Electric. Yeah, so in terms of the holdings, it's really something quite different. And um, let's talk about what place do these stocks have in your portfolio. So this ETF have arise because investing for the new generation has changed as the focus is more hyper growth rather than value investing. Innovation is the way companies can differentiate themselves nowadays. Of course, if you are thinking of making a quick buck or to invest in companies based on social sentiment, there is a larger amount of risk involved and definitely you should always look first look at your risk profile portfolio size before deciding if you will buy into stocks uh, like BAS ETF or FOMO ETF which uses like uh, social sentiments and the important news that they uh, read, correct? So this way of managing risk definitely uh, for me wouldn't make me a millionaire in the short run but at least I know I'm putting money uh, based on like uh, calculated risk so looking at the S&P 500 growth, I would think that fundamentally, if you state the cost and invested in S&P 500, you would still have experienced quite a nice growth in your portfolio size. And I think coming across a FOMO ETF and BAS ETF, it is really interesting as we start investing and finding out that there are so many new and indigenous ways that can bring us wealth in this new time and age. So I hope that you guys uh, enjoy this article or video and to stay safe and well. Thank you.